River Lady here, and nope, this video is not about gardening. This time I want to talk about my songbirds, and more specifically, I want to talk about Mycoplasmo galliseptisum. Microplasma galliseptisum. Avian conjunctivitis. I have a little outbreak going on here at my feeders and um, I'd like to help you in case you get a similar situation because I guess the conjunctivitis is starting to spread amongst many species of songbirds. Okay, so let's get started. Let's start with patient zero. This is patient zero. She's a female house finch and she was the first bird at my bird feeders to have the condition called avian conjunctivitis. Um, it is a bacterial infection and just like regular conjunctivitis in humans, it's highly contagious and birds, when they come to the bird feeders, spread it very easily to other birds. And this conjunctivitis, this bacteria, is able to spread from species to species and it doesn't have to go through any type of, I don't know, I can't think off the top of my head, any type of altering to its genetic code. It spreads very easily between species of birds and she was the little devil who gave the condition to one of my goldfinches who you see here. This is patient number two my American goldfinch male. He was the second bird to develop the condition. He did not fare very well. He died after four days where the little female house finch is still going like a rocket. When you have a condition like conjunctivitis at your feeders, you need to do everything you can to try to stop the spread of it. I'd like you to watch this clip and tell me if you can find how the disease is actually spreading from bird to bird. If you guessed that it's those large seed holes that the birds are putting their heads into as the reason why the disease is spreading between my songbirds, you get the prize. When the birds place their heads in those seed holes, the conjunctivitis scrapes off, is left behind, and then the next bird comes along and contracts it. It's just like you shaking hands with someone who has conjunctivitis who has rubbed their eyes. Very contagious disease. So what do you do if you develop conjunctivitis at your bird feeders? Well, the first thing you have to do is get rid of all the seed that you had in the feeders. It needs to be disposed of. The next thing you need to do is disinfect your feeders. And disinfecting them is easier than you think. Disinfecting your feeder is super easy. You need a 10% bleach solution, one part bleach to nine parts water. The water doesn't have to be hot. Here, I just have regular water from my hose. You wanna make sure that you get any seeds or any dried feces or pieces of seed that collect at the bottom of your feeder. You wanna scrape all that out if you have one of these catch pans at the bottom of your feeder. And then it's just a matter of taking the feeder and dropping it in in your bleach solution. You do want to wear gloves. And swishing it around. And then you want to rinse it really, really well and let it dry thoroughly. This is the feeder that I got to replace the one with the large seed openings. I like this style. I've always had this style as you saw with the other one. It had the same type of cage on the outside which helps to prevent squirrels from getting at the seed. But unlike the other feeder that has those large seed openings that the birds stick their heads into, this one just has a wire tube on the inside that the birds just pull the seeds out of. So the bird's head is kept away from the seed and we have a little female goldfinch here who's going to test it for me. She is the first bird at the feeder. Naturally, she's going to the back. Come on, show us how you get the seed out. This feeder is made by Woodlink, 
but you can also get similar feeders from Droll Yankee and Audubon. There are plenty on the market. And here is a nut hatch. Thank you for showing how to get the seed. I like this style because it's open at the bottom. So spent seed and drop seeds go right down to the ground and they don't collect in a pan where they can become moldy and also help to spread disease or infection. Um, what else can I tell you about this? It's already been squirrel tested and I will post that little video clip at the end of this video. The top locks so the squirrels can't get in through the top. It's well made, well constructed. It does come with a warranty. I will post the link if you're interested in going to Woodlink's website to check out the feeders. Again, I don't get any money for recommending products. These are just products that I use. And that just about does it for me. Thank you for watching my video on avian conjunctivitis. I hope you don't develop it at your bird feeders. But if you do, now you have a little bit of information that will help you deal with it. Please head over to ConcordRiverLady.com, my blog. I have a post there about avian conjunctivitis and I have links to some great resources, including Cornell's Feeder Watch website, which has a host of information on avian conjunctivitis and songbirds and just as a group. Anyway, I'm losing track of what I'm doing. Thank you for watching. Please subscribe. And now I will introduce you to my squirrel. Happy birding!